So your stack diagram should look something like this. You have your typical return address of whoever called main. And then you would have noticed that the very first thing that you see inside of main is a push EBP. So whatever the EBP register was pointing at, that gets pushed onto the stack. Then you start seeing your parameters for the call to func being pushed on the stack from right to left. So push 55, push 44, push 33, and so forth. That's to make them basically take this ordering. And this looks very much like the shadow stack diagram that we saw before in 64-bit. And that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 upwards. But this is not the shadow stack. This is just how the calling convention works out in 32-bit systems. Then when main called to func, you'd get a return address. Again, func first thing, push EDP. And there's no sort of padding, no alignment attempts here. So it just does the math of A plus B minus C plus D minus E, sticks it into I. So this would be I down here. So here's the assembly that I saw. And a common thing about 32-bit code is that if you see a bunch of pushes right before a call, that typically gives you a very good hint of this is how many arguments there are and what the particular values are that this particular function was being called with. In more complicated code, there could be more, you know, additional manipulation that's going on with the stack so that it's not literally every argument is a push. It could just be moved onto the stack after some math, but this gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on with the function in 32-bit code. Also, you could be forgiven if you thought this push ECX right at the beginning of func was something like a call e save register save. But it's actually not. The reason that you shouldn't think that is because you don't see balance here. There's no push ECX and corresponding pop ECX restoration at the end. And with a call e save register, we would expect saving at the beginning of the function and restoring at the end. Also, now that I'm showing you the 32-bit caller versus call e save regs, ECX is not a call e save reg anyways. So these are all the exact same things that you saw in the 64-bit ESI, EDI, instead of RSI, RDI. All the same conventions, it's just 32-bit E register forms instead of 64-bit R register forms. But here's an interesting difference between the calling convention that we've seen on the Microsoft Visual Studio thus far and these 32-bit calling conventions. Both CDECL and standard call do what I call explicit stack frame linkage. So each time you enter a new function, the old EBP gets pushed onto the stack. We saw that in the code we were just looking at. As a reminder, EBP, the BP stands for stack frame base pointer. So it's sort of a base of a stack frame. And we also saw that the new ESP gets moved into EBP. So the sort of like second assembly instruction is usually move ESP to EBP. Again, the ESP is the top of the stack pointer gets moved into EBP, the base of the stack frame. So what's going on there? So let's look at that in a simpler example than the too many parameters. So back to this very simple calling a function. This was the code in 64-bit, and this is what the code would look like in 32-bit. So I've created a nice new coloring mnemonic, B for balanced, push pop, push pop, and lavender for linkage. So let's see what's going on here. We're gonna draw this in our sort of simplified stack diagram that we had been building up. So when main starts running, of course there's a return address on the top of the stack. ESP is pointing at the return address and EDP is pointing somewhere else and I'm gonna say it's you know at some higher address than ESP. So main's frame is now created because we're into main. First thing main is gonna do is push EDP. So ESP moves down, automatically decremented by the push assembly instruction, and that pushed EBP, so EBP is register, it points at some address up here, that saved EBP is actually pointing at wherever EBP is pointing. The next assembly instruction is doing move ESP to EBP. So that's going to move EBP so that it's pointing at the same place as ESP. So they're now both pointing at this slot, and this slot, in some notional sense, is pointing back wherever EBP used to point before it just got moved here. And then main is going to call func. So that's going to push a return address onto the stack, decrementing ESP. 
Funk now has a notional stack frame. First thing Funk does with that stack frame is it's going to push EBP. So ESP decrements EBP, which still points up here. It's pointing at this address on the stack. It's going to push that address of this location on the stack. So in some notional sense, it is pointing back at where EBP pointed, is currently pointing, rather. And then again, the next assembly instruction, move ESP to EBP, thereby moving down EBP. So this is the sort of linkage that I'm talking about. EBP is always kind of being kept pointing at the base of each stack frame, but the, the value at that base is pointing back at the previous base, is pointing back at the previous base. So let's put together more what this code would look like that we've been building up in our stack diagrams for throughout the class if we were doing the 32-bit calling convention. So EBP is pointing somewhere on the stack, and when main gets called, the return address of whoever called main is going to be there. ESP now points there. Stack frame exists for main. First assembly instruction in main would be to push EBP, and that would cause this sort of notional linkage back to the previous value of EBP. Next assembly instruction would be anticipated to be move ESP to EBP, pulling it down and pointing it at the beginning of this new stack frame. And then in this particular case, main has a single local variable C, so it would allocate some space for a local variable. Then it would further allocate some space. It would push onto the stack seven as the parameter to foo. So push the function arguments seven, ESP moving down once again, and then call into the function and it's going to push the return address onto the stack. Then we're going to be in foo and the first thing we would expect in that sort of function prolog using this new term, that first little bit of assembly at the beginning of the function, we call the function prolog. First bit of assembly, push EBP. So new stack frame, push EBP, which has the value that points up here at the previous saved EBP, and then move ESP to EBP. So there you go, move it down. Now it's pointing at the base of this stack frame. All right, B has a single, sorry, foo has a single local variable of B, so that would get allocated and placed onto the stack. And then any function parameters, such as this B, which acts as the Y for bar, is going to be pushed onto the stack. And then when you call the function, the return address is going to get pushed on the stack. So now you're notionally in the bar frame. And we expect the first assembly instruction to be push EBP. It's going to save EBP, which points back here where EBP currently points. And then move ESP to EBP to move it down. There's a single local variable A in bar, so it would allocate space for that. And it would fill in the value of 3 times Y and do all the math there. Now bar does call other functions, so it would actually, you know, push the parameters, this, you know, a pointer to a string for printf and the value of a, but we're just going to stop there to keep it simple for now. So at this point, I think you're ready to see the sort of maximum stack diagram. This is the thing that I said was super complicated, and I tried to get into it too early in previous classes, but now that we've learned all about, you know, calling functions and passing parameters and local variables, call these save registers, caller save registers, we can finally see sort of what all is going to be in a maximum stack. So again, we would have, you know, EBP, ESP, and so we've got the return address from main to whoever called main as the first thing always. Some new stack frame. Then in a 32-bit world with 32-bit stack calling conventions, you would have always saved EBP as the first thing on that frame. You'd have local variables stored on the stack frame, if any local variables. You would have callee save registers, if any. And then before it starts calling a function, it would save any caller save registers. And it would push any function arguments. And when it finally calls it, it would have the return address to get back to main. So this is sort of the maximum stack contents. But see that it says, you know, if any, all of these places. So quite frankly, there could be no local variables, there could be no callee save registers, caller save registers, or func function arguments. You know, if this was a leaf node, of course, it would have, you know, just saved EBP, like we saw in our simple example before, and no further usage of the stack frame. And so that would continue as a function calls other functions, saved, saved EBPs go first, and so forth. All the stuff that we just saw in the previous example, and when we finally get to a leaf node, we would expect the leaf node and the leaf function to have only these things, only potentially callee save registers, local variables, and the saved EBP. 
no caller, save registers, no function arguments, and no return address if it doesn't call anything. And so one little helpful thing if you happen to be looking at 32-bit code is that frequently you will see function parameters getting referenced as EBP plus something and local variables as EBP minus something or depending on the compiler it might be ESP plus something. So you can see that if this was our final you know sort of stack diagram and EBP is always kind of pointing at the beginning of a particular frame for the function that you're in then EBP plus something is going to be the function arguments. If you're in bar, the function arguments are here. If you're in foo, function arguments are here. But they're always kind of EBP plus something. And the local variables would then be EBP minus something. That would be typical of a local variable access. But some compilers or some compiler options, instead they index things as ESP plus something. And sometimes it's mixed, so they'll still do EBP plus something for function arguments and ESP plus something for locals, or it might just be ESP plus something for all of it. But that's just a basic heuristic for you. If you happen to be looking at 32-bit code and you see EBP plus something, it's probably a function argument. If you see EBP minus something, it's probably a local variable access.